So imagine for a moment you are in class and you're given a homework and without a pen and paper your teacher tells you this. I want you to go to 212.58.237.54 uh, and write about what you see there. You would struggle to remember that. Humans are no good at remembering numbers. Humans are much better and much more likely to remember words. And this is really important. This is why we have this system called DNS, the domain name system, to convert from URLs, which you will be familiar with like this. So if I told you instead to go, instead of that number, if I said go to www.bbc.co.uk, you are more likely to remember that. And the whole idea of DNS is that it goes from a URL, it takes a URL like this one here, www.bbc.co.uk, and it converts it into an IP address. That is the how the whole system is supposed to work. So it will take this and it'll convert it into a number, uh, 212.58.237.54 in this case. And that is what the computer needs, importantly, to be able to access the website. Not this, it can't work with words, it needs this. It needs the IP address here, okay? And we are going to talk about basically how that whole system works. So I want you to imagine being at home um, and then you're on your uh, web browser here. So you're on your computer and this is your web browser. And in that web browser, you type in, let's say you've got Chrome at the open at the top. So we'll put that little uh, symbol there. You type into the bar right at the top, www.bbc.co.uk. So what will happen next is the browser, and it is the browser's job here, so that's the application that triggers this whole thing, will take um, the URL, so bbc.co.uk, and go and contact the nearest DNS server. Now more likely than not, that is going to be your uh, internet service provider's DNS server. So let's have this here, DNS server. Um, so that could be, for example, if you're at home, you're probably talking about BT or Virgin or TalkTalk or GIFGAF or something like that. Okay, that would be your DNS server here. And the DNS server will have a big stonking long list of, uh, of URLs. So for example, here it will already have almost certainly um, the URL for uh, bbc.co.uk and it will know uh, from previous requests what the IP address is. So what it does, it takes that uh, URL, matches it up to our IP address and sends the IP address back um, to the browser. Okay, then the browser uses the IP address to actually access the website. So it's the IP address which is used, not um, the URL to access the website. It'll then do this other request, um, go into the BBC servers uh, and then your obviously your website, your web page will get returned and displayed to you. Okay, so far so good. So that is your typical sort of request and response process for DNS. But things get a little bit thornier if this doesn't happen, if the, you don't have um, the website in the DNS server already, because there's a few, a few things that needs to happen then. So let's say the website you're going to visit this time is www.amazon.co.uk, and that co.uk is going to be really important going forward, and you'll see why. Um, it's very unlikely this will happen in reality. Your chances are the DNS server will have this um, URL. But let's assume just for a moment that for some reason it doesn't. So it goes to uh, where the IP address for Amazon should be and it can't find it. So what does it do? I mean, it could just immediately return that we don't, we can't find the website, but that's not true. We know this website exists. So the DNS server will then go and contact other DNS servers and these would be these things called higher authority DNS servers. So if you imagine there's one massive um, DNS server which deals with all the websites that end with .co.uk okay and it will retrieve the IP address from that web uh, that DNS server that higher authority DNS server. And once it's got a copy of that, so it's asked.co.uk, do you have this IP address? And it said, yes, we do have the IP address. Then it takes a copy of it. And that's really important that it takes a copy of that IP address because it means it doesn't need to ask the .co.uk uh, DNS server again, which means this whole solution can scale properly to, uh, to work with you know the millions of people uh, that use the internet, all right? So now the, IP, uh, the DNS server knows the IP address and it can send it back to the browser. Here uh, and the browser then accesses the Amazon web page. Okay, so that's how that whole system works. Last wrinkle that could happen. What if we mistype this? And let's say we, instead of looking for amazon.co.uk, uh, we end up typing amanon.co.uk. I don't know, that might actually exist, but let's just say that it doesn't. So amanon.co.uk. 
So you fudge type in it, we can't find it in the DNS server and it can't be found in the code.uk server. Well, in that case, you get an error message returned. It says, nope, we can't find this uh, website anywhere. It doesn't exist. So that's how DNS works, all about moving from words to numbers, which, you know, is easier for humans to use. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.